Hi everyone, I'm Emma Everett, Client Advice Manager and Chair of the Residential Investment Committee at Momentum Wealth. Over the last few weeks, I've been meeting with members of our team to discuss the impact of the COVID-19 health crisis on different aspects of the property market, with a particular focus on the WA market. Today, I'm joined by Phil Anderson, Manager of our Developments team, to have a look at how this health crisis is impacting construction, property development, and the apartment market. Thanks for joining me, Phil. Hi, Emma. Hi, everyone. Now, Phil, this is quite a timely discussion given the recent announcement from our Planning Minister, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about. But first, can you give us some insights on how COVID-19 is impacting day-to-day -day operations at construction and development sites in Perth? Absolutely. So I guess the good thing for us is at the moment, construction is still progressing as normal. Um, so construction is being treated as an, as an essential service and, and certainly something the government's focused on maintaining to, um, to keep our economy moving as much as we can. So our sites are all still underway. Um, so social distancing and hygiene, of course, is, is now in play. Um, but basically all our projects are sort of progressing as normal. Um, I guess just one thing we have to be mindful of at the moment is, is changes in supply chains. Um, so, you know, there is a lot of materials that come from, from overseas, from China, et cetera. It's taking a little bit longer to get those materials through. And there are some, some items which are, are becoming a bit harder to source. So we're just looking at that with our builders and staying ahead of the game and making sure that um, we either select different things that we, we substitute tile choices, for example, um, or look at, look at sourcing them locally and things like that. And will that have any broader impact on construction costs or building processes in Perth? Uh, so there is some potential impacts. You know, one of them is that the Australian dollar is very low at the moment off the back of, um, I guess, the crisis that we're seeing. So um, appliances are probably one example of something that's gone up in, in value as a result. You know, things that we're importing out of, out of Europe, European appliances, um, in some cases, have gone up by about 30%. So again, we're looking at solutions to, to counter that. Um, quotes that we've actually received that are still valid if we accept them in an issue of purchase order, um, then we actually hold those prices. So we're looking at doing things like that. Or otherwise, um, you know, we just time the, the order to hopefully coincide with things getting better on the other end. Um, but the main thing is probably communicating with builders and, and working with them to, to change specs and, and try and mitigate any extra costs that might, um, that might come up. And so that's the construction process. What about the planning approvals process? How is this situation impacting the timeline of seeking development approval and seeing that go through? So at the moment, councils are all um, continuing to operate remotely. So it's all business as usual, just everyone's uh, operating from home and, and, and via Zoom and, and other means like that. So we actually just had our, one of our design review panel meetings this week for one of our um, apartment projects in the city of Stirling. And the entire panel was done uh, via Zoom with everyone um, Zooming in from their, from their home via video camera, which was pretty, uh, pretty interesting, a bit different to the, the normal, very formal process sitting in a council chamber. Yeah. Um, so that's everything's business as usual there. Some councils have said that there might be some delays. For example, Netherlands are, are saying that they are sort of falling a little bit behind, but that might also be because they've also recently done a lot of rezoning. So they've got a few more applications in the system than they normally do. Um, we'll see how that plays out, um, regardless of, of, I guess, the, the delays that they might experience at council. Uh, you know, statutory timeframe still continues. So if, uh, if an approval does drag out too long, we do have appeal rights at, as a deemed refusal. So that's certainly an option that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess the, the bigger picture is that, that you know, the government and local councils want to get approvals through. So industry groups are pushing very hard to keep projects moving forward. Um, the Minister for Planning has actually written to all of the councils, urging them to, to get on with business and get approvals moving so that we can get back out there and get the projects up and running and hopefully push the, uh, the economy forward and, and get out of this uh, the situation that we're in. Fantastic to get that kind of government support for such a big industry, such a big part of the WA economy. Absolutely. And so a big announcement in that vein is, is this week the, the Minister of Planning announcing a two-year extension on development approvals. Can you tell us a little bit of the detail behind that? That's right. So the Minister's um, basically invoked emergency powers in the planning and development regulations that were actually brought in um, as a result of the coronavirus, um, the crisis that we're in. So um, one of the, the big key changes there has been that they've implemented a two-year extension on all development approvals. And that extension is automatic. It just gets added to the end of the existing approval um, and, and adds another two years to that to the approvals. Interestingly, it also, it, the reading of the Act appears that it, it will apply to any new approvals that are granted in the next, um, next few months until this state of emergency is actually cancelled. So um, it's just a good thing. It's, you know, it, it, hopefully projects still move forward and we're looking to try and get ours moving forward as much as we can. 
but it just gives you that extra little buffer of a couple of years if needed. So. Absolutely. I understand that the industry are quite actively lobbying for further changes to support the construction industry in the development sector. Can you tell us some more about those? Yeah, that's right. So UDIA, Rewa, Property Council and, and other industry bodies are all lobbying for tax breaks and incentives such as the, you know, the first home buyers grant and um, being extended and, and other measures. Now, these are all really effective ways to stimulate the industry. So I expect some of those will definitely be looked at uh, in due course. Um, the thing about them is, you know, these things tend to have more of an effect when people are actually looking to buy property and, and right now things are largely on hold. So I, I imagine government's probably going to hold, hold some of these things off and probably announce them over the next few months as we get back towards, uh, back towards a bit, bit more like normal um, and out of the depths of the lockdown. So when people are actually looking at properties. Um, now, right. looking at where the apartment development market was at um, prior to all of this, you know, how are we positioned in Perth and in the Perth apartment market kind of to weather the, I suppose, the situation we find ourselves in now? Um, so, look, we were, we were actually looking fairly good. You know, we were coming, uh, we, like the residential housing market, we've been in a pretty, um, pretty much a downturn for four or five years. Mm -hmm. um, and we were sort of coming off the bottom of that cycle. So, um, according to Urbis, who do a, a survey every quarter of apartment sales, um, we've had three consecutive quarters of improvement in off the plan sales um, you know, over the last 12 months. And in fact, I'd say the March quarter was probably on track to make that four, four quarters of consecutive growth. Um, unfortunately, that's probably changed now. Things have, uh, have probably gone a bit quieter. Um, and the other thing we were seeing was existing stock of, that was on market hanging around from the last construction boom in sort of 14, 15. Um, that was also being absorbed. So that was creating a lot more room for new supply to come forward. So. I guess generally the market sentiment was pretty positive and um, new project launches were being mooted and everyone was, was looking forward to, to things being pretty positive coming up to, um, to sort of to March. Um, obviously now, given the current situation, we're seeing really a pause in activity. There's no strong buyer signals out there. Um, you know, investors in the short term are waiting and seeing what happens um, and developers are also withdrawing their supply. So the, good, the positive there is it's both the demand and the supply um, equation being pulled back rather than just one side of the equation continuing to to affect the market. Um, so that's largely anticipated, but I guess when we come off this, we feel that we're in a pretty good position compared to other states um, because of where we were at the cycle. So you know, we were at the bottom of the cycle in contrast to Sydney and Melbourne where there was um, significant speculation in the market and investors buying off the plan, pushing up prices to new highs. Um, in Perth, we were at that bottom of the market with owner occupiers being the main, the main buyers who are um, obviously a lot more sticky and you know, they tend to tend not to react by selling their properties in a downturn like uh, investors do. Yeah, it's interesting. It's always tricky commenting on the Australian property market as a whole because it's made up of so many different locations. And, and in the same way, of course, you know, our economy in WA is influenced by different industries compared to other parts of the country that might be more affected by areas like tourism, for example, and hospitality. So certainly good to see that mining projects are moving forward and some of the other long-term infrastructure projects in WA are continuing ahead. Uh, to underpin our economy moving forward. Now, Phil, we've talked a lot about apartment projects today. What advice would you have or, or comments would you have about the small development market? So property owners who have maybe a two or three or four villa site, uh, how does all this impact them? So look, yeah, look for smaller markets, um, the smaller developments are probably quite well positioned. You know, if they can get the, get the funding to proceed with their project, um, like we said, on the other, other side of this um, downturn, we're thinking we're going to be quite well positioned. Um, the rental market in Perth has been pretty strong, so developing to hold is a, is a good option in this market. Mm -hmm. And um, builders are also pretty keen to get work. You know, there is, you know, there's no doubt that they're, they're in, um, their work is being impacted by this. Some people are pulling projects that aren't proceeding at this point in time. So builders are keen to get, get jobs going. Um, pricing is very sharp. And if you can get going on site, it's a, it's a good time to be building. Um, obviously, you know, one of the big things at the moment is due diligence is it's always important, but particularly at the moment, um, making sure that your builder's got the cash flow to, to survive the crisis and to be, be working on the other side and completing the project. Now, Phil, just as the national economy has a variety of industries that underpin it, and for us in WA, we're very fortunate to have such strong performance from the mining industry with projects going ahead and less exposure to some areas like tourism than, than other states. There are different aspects of the property market, price points, buyer demographics and locations that are impacted differently uh, during this time of emergency. Uh, what insights do you have about which projects, which types of projects are going to be best positioned to ride out this crisis? 
Um, yeah, look, absolutely. There's, there's different sectors that are going to perform better. So boutique developments in, in prime locations are, are where we'd look to. Um, we'd expect them to, to continue attracting strong demand when things normalise, um, especially those that are targeting the more affluent markets, such as the western suburbs. Um, we're also thinking that we'll probably see an increase in activity in the downsizer market. And in fact, we think that the, the crisis might bring forward um, the decision of some downsizers to sell their larger family home, realise some equity and, and move into a smaller property, um, particularly those that maybe are, are in retirement or close to retirement and needing to supplement their superannuation savings, which, which may well have taken a hit over the last few months. Um, we're also seeing, um, we'll probably see some in increased investor activity you know, as investors seek safety in bricks and mortar and, um, and the returns that they get from that, particularly in a, in a low interest rate environment that we're in at the moment. Um, in the longer term, I guess the, the crisis is undoubtedly gonna have a, a probably a larger, wider societal impact and change the way we design our apartments and homes. Um, how this plays out, we yet to see, but there is already research that's coming out of DWA, for example, um, that's taking, you know, there's gonna be increased consideration for things like spaces for working from home. Um, there'd be a premium on open spaces and, um, the suggestion that maybe the revitalisation of the, the local shops and the high street might be some of the things that might come out of this um, the current crisis. So things like that we'll also be looking at, at over time and seeing how that plays out and perhaps that might uh, put some consideration into how we, uh, how we design our developments and which sites we buy and, and how we develop them. Thanks, Phil. There's some great insights there and no doubt I'll be calling on you for more updates as this situation evolves and changes over the coming weeks. No problem. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. I hope you found this interview helpful. If you've missed earlier videos in our series about finance or the wider property market, do visit us online to get caught up. If you have questions about your own property portfolio, whether it's financing, purchasing or an existing property and you need advice, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We'd love to help you. To get in touch with our team or for regular updates on the COVID-19 crisis and its impact on the property market, visit us at momentumwealth.com.au forward slash coronavirus. Thanks for joining us.